Hi, I'm Rob and in this Gems of War video I'm going to show you the team I would change to when this journey event starts to get a bit tougher. Now I did do well on this last time around, I got the 20,000 miles and it was really straightforward with the team I showed so hopefully this team will be as effective. The idea of this is to go as far as you can and complete as many miles as you can so you want to always go to the one with the highest miles. Now do bear in mind that if you lose a troop on this you will lose miles as well. And you will also lose miles if you go above 10 turns to complete the battle. Which is why these games rely on the looping mechanic to loop and loop and loop and just do as much damage as you can without passing the turn to the opponent. Because what's important to know is one turn in this event is basically all your moves, including all your extra turns, until they come to an end, then the opponent has their turn and it comes back to you. That is one complete turn. So complete the battles in less than 10 turns total to get the maximum amount of miles. Pretty straightforward. But the team we're going to use for this is going to take advantage of the new Spirit Walker class. And I'll show an alternative as well if you want to be even safer if you're a newer player to the game. But for this one, we're going to loop and loop and loop with Todd Greenwood because he deals damage to an enemy, then creates three green gems boosted by Wargear allies. Now in this Spirit Walker class, we are going to have all Wargear allies now because it's only just come out. And we can benefit from this uh, by being in this class so we get the maximum amount of green from Todd. So we're going to loop with that, get lots of four matches, which is going to be really good for persistence. Because we're going to have two of these, and that gives four to all skills on all of Wargear allies when matching four or more gems. So that becomes eight to all skills, which is crazy considering we're going to be looping and looping and looping with Todd. So we're getting eight to all skills on literally everybody, every single four match, which is absolutely nuts. But the key to safety in this is basically making sure we cast Essence of Evil on the top one or two troops to keep them permanently entangled, death marked, frozen, silenced, everything. Make sure you can't get damaged by them because on the high level it takes one or two skull hits to kill you off and you've lost a troop, which you do not want. So keep them absolutely entangled, frozen and etc. with Essence of Evil, which will be a piece of cake because with Todd generating all that green, they'll get charged up really, really quickly. Now, what is important as well is with your Todd Greenwood, you only cast on enemy troops that don't use green. And the reason is persistence does double damage versus green enemies. So you save those green enemies for persistence to finish off because their stats will go absolutely crazy because we're getting those massive buffs to all our team. So really easy to use a team list. The banner for this one would be plus two green, plus one brown, minus one red mushroom banner from... And mana thrax, and we are in Spirit Walker class. Drain two mana from a random enemy when an ally casts a spell is really good, as is reduced damage from spells by 25%. This Spirit Drain is effective, but you do have to bear in mind that it's not in intelligent. When it says drain mana from a random enemy, it can drain it from anybody or attempt to, even if they've got zero mana. Someone else could have 10 out of 12 mana, someone else could have zero mana, and it still may try to do that on the one that's got no mana. So it's not going to be super um, effective all the time, but it is overall pretty decent. The talent trees, I would recommend you going up to at least level 20 on this to make sure you get mana source, start battles with 50%. And root trap, entangling the first enemy at the start, protects us from any unlucky skull bashage at the beginning. Purification is called, cool and so is resilience. Now, if you're not comfortable with that one, or you want something even safer if you're a newer player to the game, then you can switch to Elementalist. The downside to this is you're not going to loop as well with your Todd Greenwood because you're obviously taking one war gear out of the equation, but this is still a really, really safe way to go because for start, all those four matches, you're going to stun, freeze, burn, and entangle a random enemy with those four matches. And you also get some really cool things in here like Rock Solid, gain a barrier when matching brown gems, and uh, Stone Mastery, you get extra brown as well, and Fortitude. So really good, particularly that um, Rock Solid and that third trait there, Elemental Force. But I'll show this in this class here, Spirit Walker, because I want to take a look at the um, Mana Drain and things like that. Let's show how we use this. A horse can't come in my pub, especially with a geezer holding a flaming pumpkin. Literally, that is absolutely nuts. Right, so we've got our Todd up absolutely straight away. Our Todd is up and ready to do its damage. So we'll cast that on somebody that doesn't use the green. 
bizarrely that didn't get charged up then but the top troop is entangled already before you keep on looping you can just keep on casting this on somebody that doesn't use green it's going to be effective most of the time and the damage is going up and up and up look it was on 78 just then now it's 94 it was more than 95 because they that's what they had left 110 huge damage on our top troop look we're doing 162 attack remember you're gaining life and armor as well every single time you do this to all our troops so it makes it really really tanky don't take things like this you want to save these four matches because the more green that are on the board the better it is for todd's spell now doing 126 damage 134 remember all this is still the same turn as well there's no need to actually cast this. We can just cast these now. Let's get it done. See you later. Really straightforward. On to the next. This is the boss battle. You can do 225 miles max with these. But obviously things do get a lot tougher than this. Just make sure you keep those top two troops. At least the top one. All you know on, on the harder levels, I'd even I'd just cast Essence of Evil and then charge a Todd again. If you're staying in spirit caller class so todd's up and ready to go already we'll cast this on anybody because no one's using green so basically we're not gonna gain any real benefit from that again okay. i'll take these if you see like these four matches worth taking eight to all stats on all troops our damage is going up and up 102 now Death is dead. Now doing 126. 134. 142. Dead. Hideous skull damage. Well, normally, they must have some serious armor reduction or skull reduction. Yeah, reduced damage from skulls by 65%. Wow. It's a lot. But the main thing is keeping them entangled. Let's just do this. Give persistence a bit of action. Why not? Obviously, if you decide to cast your Essence of Evil, it does give you the safety of silencing, death marking, and everything. But um, you are normally going to lose your turn unless you get lucky on a four match on the uh, resulting explosion. So let's get our two troops up. Look for any four matches. Is there anything doing anywhere? Not really seeing anything. All the time the top troop is entangled, it's generally pretty safe to keep repeat casting your, your Todd. Get your Todd up and just go for it. Take out anybody that's annoying. I'm not actually looking around for other color four matches right now, but you actually should do, especially if you're a newer player. This is gonna make a big difference to your stats. leave the green ones for persistence to take out uh, let's give him a couple of wallops he's gone is that going to be enough for two hits no not quite oh yeah, it was good double damage you see i think he was using green yeah no it's like miles under 10 turns it's not even close it's like two turns or maybe three tops might have, been, might have been two right so what are we going to get no green to start with so we'll look for a brown if we can but we'll obviously take that for the stats boost then that's good for our todd get your todd up one thing uh, to be careful of here is of is um you actually want to target this thing first and it's two reasons not just because you get the extra sigils when you kill it but because it summoned a dark storm when an ally dies so a dark storm is purple so basically you're going to get more chance of getting purple than green that we actually want so basically if you don't kill this first for every troop that you kill you're going to keep on getting a purple storm so by killing it first you get that purple storm once and then once the poor purple storm is gone then basically you don't have to keep fighting a never-ending battle against the purple storm basically so we'll get rid of this dicky bird first Show you, what, show you what I mean when the um, storm pops up. Because it will do. 
So it activates actually after he dies. Or she, whatever it is. I don't know. But yeah, now we'll get a purple storm, which is actually against what we actually want. But the best, best way is to get that thing out of the way first. Because if you keep on killing enemies, like I said, you'll get a dark storm every single turn, which you absolutely do not want. But we're doing so much damage now, look, look, it's 140 or damage, 148, oh, we'll grab that, they're gone, we're getting life and armour for all our team, makes the top troop really tanky, we lost our turn, take that, fish bash, Journey sigils, 90 miles travelled. On to the next. Always looking to get your tot up straight away. If it's not guaranteed the next round on the Norwood Grab enough to guarantee that your Essence of Evil was up, just in case they shake off the Entangle absolutely straight away. They didn't, so all is good. And we can continue. Don't bother taking the green four matches. You're better off leaving those there. More green on the board, better chance we've got of our Todd looping. See ya. Don't kill the troop at the top that's entangled. You want them to stay entangled. And our stats just keep on going up so quick it is kind of ludicrous. You're going to have to kill him now. But then we can cast Essence of Evil for extra safety. And then just uh, finish off. Super, super easy. Uh, let's do a couple more of these. Let's try and get in the Essence of Evil up first. If someone's close to being cast, then you cast Essence of Evil on them. Other than that, keep on grabbing your four matches. Our Todd's up next round anyway. The top troop is entangled, but we'll give him a wallop anyway. And save the green enemy for your persistences. And just rinse and repeat. may seem a bit mundane and a bit dull at times and a bit samey, but this is what this event is. It's all about doing things in as few turns as possible to get the maximum amount of miles. It's what the Pathfinder troop is for and completely what it's about. Could hit them with um, persistence. Just do it now. <laughs> Got the Devourer instead crazy right i'm just going to do the boss and call the video a day video you're a day no green enemies there so we can attack who we like with our todd bash them with our todd no green there so we'll certainly take some brown for our todd meister don't worry about a skull hit because they're entangled don't pick on the top troop because you want to leave them entangled just in case we do lose the turn. Oh, should have taken that green, uh, that blue, mega blue match then. That would have been good. So you do lose the turn occasionally. And as you can say, they started with some mana, but they are losing it. Because when that uh, spirit drain thing comes in. Hello, you're going to be excited. So we'll just chuck a essence of evil on him. Oh, we're going to change to a giant to a frog. But when you start looping again, you'll get start to get all your life back. So just cast that on the top troop. Don't want to risk that skull damage. Get your Todd up. And they'll waste that turn on a skull hit. And yeah, we've got that there. That's good. Right, we'll leave the frog there for a second. 
You got any? We'll take that form actually. That's a nice extra boost. And now, even if we had that bad start, like we did, so let's see what happens. We've we lost some armor and some life, but let's see how quickly we can get it back. But they're dead. And she's gone. See all these four matches, we're getting eight armor and life back every single turn. See, we've already got like plenty of <laughs> life and armor again. You should now cast Essence of Evil, by the way, on the last troop. Or cast Persistence because it hits twice. But yeah, and that went against us a couple of times. We didn't actually loop then with Todd a couple of times and still recovered really, really easily. I said that was going to be the last one, but started another one. Let's do this one then and then we'll call the video a day. Video, you're a day. Right, pick on the non green enemies. Let's do it properly this time. So we hit all the enemies that aren't green with Todd, save them for persistence. Stats are going up and up and up. We're now doing 64 damage. Even with that armor reduction, that um, spell reduction that they've got, ordinarily we'd be doing more than that. So they're gone. Now we're doing more damage on these because they... Uh, oops, that was a... Ordinarily you want to actually cast Essence of Evil now. You lose a turn for one time, but you don't mind that. You could have that safety. If you want to cast your persistences, you absolutely can. Stacks of damage. But I do prefer just to keep looping because that is what the idea of the game is. And like I say, like we got hit then by Trixa look a couple of times and we lost quite a lot of health. So it is better to just keep on looping. Unless you know you've done the maths and it works out, your persistences will kill those last two enemies. Don't give them any chance whatsoever, because if the game gets a chance, it will take it. Well, I've got one sigil left. I might as well use it, and I. Ladies, Vera's come into the pub. Holding her weird smoky skull thing. Right, can we get a four match out of this anywhere? Mm, nope. Yes, we can. Of course we can. Stealthy second opponent. So good to get your stats up nice and high, first of all. Oops, should be picking on the Valraven at the bottom for reasons I said earlier. Because it creates a dark storm. When an ally dies, which is purple, you don't want to keep on killing other enemies and getting a dark storm. Getting in the way of our green all the time. So you want to pick on that thing first. Let's get him done. He lost one turn, but they're still entangled, so no big deal. But they can have that skull back, thank you very much. And we'll take them for extra power to our team. And that one there. 142 that Whoops, there's another one. Might as well. Yeah, like I was saying a minute ago, when I uh, decided to hand the turn back to the opponent, just don't take the chance. If you want to loop with Todd, this is by far the best way of doing it unless you absolutely know your persistences will take out the enemy. And it becomes an absolute walk in the park. So there it is. It is the video. A very safe team to use for this journey event as things get tougher. If you enjoyed it, found it useful, any of that sort of stuff, be really cool if you hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.